Wegner's studies, like Libet's, are about the causal efficacy of the conscious feeling of having caused something. But why should the feeling of having caused something be necessary for having caused it? Perhaps the feeling of having caused something is not about what one will do, but about what one just did. That is, there may be an ongoing analysis of what one has caused that is not causal of what one will do, but is instead a description, rather like a narrative, about the immediate past. In this regard, we should consider the theory of Hugo von Helmholtz of corollary discharge. The idea was framed initially in the context of eye movements. Helmholtz wondered how we're able to distinguish between motion that's generated across the retina because of eye movements, which is self-generated motion and therefore spurious, from motion arising from the motion of things in the world. He had the idea that we plan to make an eye movement. This gives rise to an expectation of a certain kind of motion across the retina arising from the self-generated eye movement. Then we make the eye movement, which generates an actual motion signal across the retina. Then there's a stage of comparison. If the expected motion matches the motion that actually happens, then the visual system concludes that it is responsible for the motion itself and does not attribute this motion to objects in the world, but instead it attributes this motion to itself and does not generate a conscious experience of motion in the world. This is why we don't see the world move each time we move our eyes. Many scientists have argued that this basic neural circuit is applied in many ways in order to distinguish that which is self-generated from that which is not self-generated. Another example would be reaching. When I reach for something, I generate a prediction of how this will feel when I execute the reach. Then I, in fact, execute the reach. If what I expect to happen matches what, in fact, happens, then my brain concludes, I just did that. But if there is a mismatch, say the wind blows hard and my expected reach is different from my planned reach, my brain says, I did not do that. I might then look for causal explanations about why my planned reach went astray, and I might attribute this to the wind blowing. In fact, some researchers think that this is the kind of neural computation that might go awry in some aspects of schizophrenia, where people have a mismatch between a planned thought and a thought that happens. Then they say, I didn't think that, even though they, in fact, did think it. This feeling of not being the cause of their own thoughts leads them to then confabulate who or what actually might have put the thought into their heads. Be that as it may, the feeling of being the cause of an action might not be about the future at all. It often appears to be about the immediate past, at least in the domain where the collateral discharge circuit is responsible for the generation of that feeling. The feeling of conscious willing might itself be at times retrospective or retrodictive. Perhaps this is the kind of subjective feeling that Wegner's or Libet's work is examining. If that is so, nobody would expect a feeling of authorship of events that happened already in the past to be causal of those events because it's a feeling regarding past actions. It's a feeling of, I did that, instead of being a feeling of, I will do that. But just because some feelings of being the cause of an action can't be causal of that action doesn't mean that consciousness in general can never be causal of subsequent actions. It also doesn't rule out that there is another role for consciousness which is not retroaddictive, like the feeling, I just did that. There might be a prospective role for consciousness where events played out in our deliberative imaginations, for example, lead us to do things in the future. Going back to an example from an earlier lecture, Imagining what to make for dinner may lead us to then go get our car keys so that we can drive to the supermarket to buy the ingredients we need to make spinach lasagna. Another example of a retrodictive assessment of what just happened occurs in the cases of Michael Gazaniga's so-called interpreter. Gazaniga carried out experiments on split brain patients. He would show one picture in the left visual hemifield, which was only seen by the nonverbal right hemisphere, and would show another picture in the right visual hemifield, which was only seen by the verbal left hemisphere. For example, he might show a chicken to the left hemisphere, and the subject would say, chicken. Or he might show a picture of a telephone to the right hemisphere. Because the right hemisphere can't typically talk, it could not say what it had seen. 
However, with the left hand, it could, put, could point to what it had seen. Interesting cases occurred when the left hemisphere was shown one thing and the right hemisphere was shown a different thing. In one example, the right hemisphere was shown a naked person, while the left hemisphere was shown a chicken. The image of the naked person made the right hemisphere laugh, ha, ha, ha. But when asked why he was laughing, the left hemisphere, which had only seen a chicken, made up a cover story about what just happened. The left hemisphere essentially confabulated a story and said, that was a funny chicken. Gazaniga thinks that a confabulating interpreter exists in the left hemisphere and is continually concocting a causal narrative about our bodies and our own actions in order to try to make sense of them under the assumption that there is a unified self. This may in fact be the case and is another kind of retrodictive evaluation of what we just did. It is not prospective, namely about the future, but is retrodictive about the past. Even though this is a different mechanism than the corollary discharge mechanism discussed above, it is also retrodictive. If all that existed in our brains were retrodictive assessments that lead to the conscious feeling of, I just did that, or I just caused that, then there would not be any reason to think that consciousness caused future events. But just because some kinds of conscious experiences are about what one just did does not mean that all conscious experiences are retrodictive. Some conscious experiences, such as those involved in deliberation about what one will later do, may play a causal role in the outcomes considered during one's deliberations.